trying to tell us, well, how much would someone earn if the uh, education value, let me just put in a, a, a scale, uh, uh, let me just increase the scale, just hypothetically, you know, somebody could technically have zero years of education, conceivably. So what we have here is the intercept. So if this line here, you can probably, in, in your mind, you can envision a slope going down, down, down. And at this point, it's at the, at the zero for education, but it's actually in the negatives for earnings. Uh, so that's why uh, this value, let me see actually if I can get the, yeah, there we go. So I got the uh, regression line into there. Uh, but I won't be able to actually uh, push it through. Uh, actually, let me see if I can. I'll scale that to negative 250. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it does. So there we go. We've got, based on the regression line, which is going to be slightly different than the actual estimate when you calculate it from the values, but we can see this is roughly you know, a little more than negative 250. And this is the slope going down. So 58 bucks every unit, there's an increase of $58 from uh, for, for each year of education on a weekly basis. And we can see that our slope is intersecting where the point of zero, in fact the margins here are actually at 5%. So let me um, get that different. I'm actually doing a lot more here than I wanted to, but uh, let's yeah get rid of those in case you didn't know how to get uh, this guy. So it's actually about 250 exactly once we get rid of the margins. It's just a factor of the, of the plot. So that's what this intercept value of negative 240, when you estimate it on the, like with the actual uh, the formulae, you get negative 240. And uh, when you do it with the scatter plot, with the regression, the line of least fit with the regression line, which is going to approximate, it's never going to be exactly the same, particularly with a small sample size and values that don't even exist in that point of the spectrum of the, of the x and y values. But um, yeah, so I find that interesting that the y value is totally absurd that somebody with no education would make, you know, no money at all from week to week basis. But it's still. Uh, a useful value if you want to actually predict how much somebody earns. You're still going to have to use this intercept value and you're still going to have to use this slope value uh, to help you build your regression equation which will form the basis of predicting particular values, which I'm not going to demonstrate in this um, tutorial. I will point out the 95% confidence intervals associated with our B values. So the intercept is actually huge. Look how big that is. That's not it go the 95 with 95% confidence. We can say that the intercept is somewhere between 983 negative and 502. And that's starting to make sense to me. Now somebody who has zero education should probably be making some money. Uh uh, and what the intercept confidence intervals are telling me is that, well, with a sample size of 25, you really have very little confidence in this estimated value of negative 240, even though, again, you would still use that value to build a regression equation in this case. But it's still, with we can't be sure that it's not a positive value because look how f much further into the positive values the upper bound goes. Now, for this 58% this $58 unit increase, uh, in actual fact, based on the 95% confidence intervals, it's somewhere between $4 and $111. But uh, from memory, I estimated, actually, I don't know what, um, I, I suspect that it'd be close to that. And if we had in the actual study, uh, but if we had a larger sample size, these uh, confidence intervals would ch would change quite drastically and we might actually get different values in here. Anyway, I wanted to point out this is very valuable information to look at the 95% confidence intervals associated with this because right now I can only say that on average we can expect one, e one year extra education to be about $58 but my sample size is so small that I can only say with 95% confidence that it's somewhere between $4 and $111. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about here are the residual plots, or testing the assumption of um, heteroscedasticity. And I guess the first thing you would look at here is the, the residual value, the mean, is zero. And so you want, want to see that the residuals are basically zero and that they've got a histogram 
uh, and they've got a normal distribution. And this looks normal-ish to me. I know I realize there's a there's a chunk missing here, uh, but it's roughly normal. You know what? A sample size of 25 uh, looks pretty good to me. Here we have the uh, normal uh, PP plots from uh, SPSS, and what we want to see here is a is well, we get the regression line automatically, and we want to see that our values are roughly co hovering, you know, shouldering uh, or straddling the uh, regression line here. And overall, with a sample size of 25, I'd say that looks pretty good. And the last plot uh, that I've got is regressing the regress regressing the standardized residuals associated with the y variable regressed onto the predicted values and we want to see that the amount of error uh, is basically not associated with a pattern of any sort uh, in the uh, y value of the predicted va variable. So there's basically a bird's nest here. We don't want to see some kind of, of pattern. Sometimes what you might see is there's a, a lot of values here and as you go out towards larger and larger predicted values you see that it fans out substantially. So over here it gets much tighter and then as you go out there's a lot more variability in your standardized residuals. You don't want to see that as a pattern. You just want to see basically random uh, random effects and this is basically the scatter plot that I created earlier to show that the this is your intercept here um, yeah so this is basically uh, an, a linear regression analysis based on some real data I thought it was interesting to see uh, just how much extra money you would earn I'm not I don't really like these data because they're so old if somebody had knowledge of other data where they estimated the correlation and the standard deviations and the means, please send it to me. I'd love to analyze it based on more current data. Thanks for listening.